good evening students am i audible Good evening, students. Uh, am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, madam. Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you see the presentation? Yes, ma'am, we can see the projection. Okay, let us start. Hope everyone can see the screen. Okay, so we are going to see uh, the basics of uh, ATFL, Automata Theory and the Formal Languages. Okay. So first term we have to learn is uh, formal language. So la in, in formal language is uh, nothing but it is a set of strings. It is basically a set. Okay. And it contains uh, different strings. Okay. And one example is uh, this L1 uh, is a formal language which contains only three strings. Blue, green and red. Those are the three strings. So language in, in formal language, in the context of formal language, language is simply a set, okay, which contains different strings. That is all. Another uh, language is uh, this 00, zero, which contains four strings, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. That is all. So you can make any set and we can call it as a language. Okay, basically, language is a set. 
then we have to see some terminologies before going into the automated theory so the uh, terminologies one is uh, alphabet it is represented with the sigma okay alphabet represented with sigma alphabet is nothing but the symbols used in the language for example english so in english language we write uh, uh, sentences paragraphs everything and when we look into the sentences and paragraphs uh, if we check the symbols the symbols are a b c d etc up to z so basically alphabet is nothing but it is the set of symbols that we use in the language even if it is for english or for telugu or for binary number system where everything alphabet means it is simply the set of symbols that we use to write the language so for english uh, alphabet is a b c d up to z then if you consider binary number system as a language then its uh, alphabet is 0 and 1 because every binary number is made using 0 and 1 okay so that is alphabet uh, sigma is the symbol that we use here to represent the alphabet then the other one is string another terminology is string or word and it is represented using small letter w okay it is nothing but the collection of symbols so in english we have written the alphabets a b c d up to z so if we make a collection of these symbols a b c suppose a b c so a b c is a string or a word okay it is a collection of characters for example we can use we can say green g r e e n it is a string and uh, it is made up of using the english alphabet okay another string example is 10011 it is another string made up of binary alphabets so here in the above we have seen the binary alphabet and the english alphabet so these are the two strings green and 10011 are the two strings made up of the these alphabets so alphabet string then we have to see the length of the string or length of the word and its representation is like this w means the word and the two pipe symbols two lines on both of the sides represents the length of the string length is nothing but the number of characters in the string okay we just count the number of symbols in that string that is the length so for example if w is the string is red r e d so the length of the string will be 3 that means r r e and d so three symbols are there the length is 3 another string we can consider hello h e l l o so there are five characters in that string hello is a string which contains five characters so the length of hello is 5 so i put two lines on both the sides of hello that means the length of the string hello so that is 5 five characters or five symbols are there in the uh, In a string so it is five length is five then another string i have taken 0 101 so 0 uh, first one second one third four so four symbols are there four characters are there in the string so the length is four then uh, another important thing is empty string and its representation is epsilon we call it as epsilon the symbol it is nothing but the null string that means it has no characters in it and its length is zero empty string or null string okay so and it has some properties if we include this null null string in any uh, alpha any uh, string any string that it will not make any change to the string so, suppose if hello is the string i am taking i put an epsilon in front of hello it will it is equivalent to hello itself because it will not make any change to the uh, given string and if i can append uh, hello at the uh, epsilon at the end of hello or in between hello okay in between some of the characters i can put epsilon still it is considered as hello only so this uh, inclusion of epsilon in a string will not make any change in the property of the string okay 
now uh, concatenation of two strings means if w1 and w2 are two strings then w1 dot w2 means concatenation or combining these two strings that means first w1 then w2 we have to add so if w1 is 0 1 0 and w2 is equal to 1 1 0 0 then w1 dot w2 means concatenation of w1 to w2 so we combine 0 1 0 and at the end we add the w2 1 1 0 0 Okay, that is concatenation. And if it was uh, W2, if it was uh, W2 dot W1, it will be uh, 1, 1, 0, 0. W2, first we have to write, then dot, uh, not dot, okay, and then, then the next string, 0, 1, 0. So this is the W1. This is W1, this is W2. Okay, so the order is changed. So we have to first write a W2, then W1, like that. That is concatenation. Then substring. Substring is any portion of our string or any consecutive symbols in your string is called the substring. So in this string W, uh, this uh, 0, 0 is a substring. These two consecutive characters um, can be taken as a substring then 101 can be taken as a substring 0101 can be taken as a substring or 11 can be any consecutive combinations of this uh, of a string or the characters in a string can be taken as a substring so 1010 can be taken as a substring okay only so these are the substrings any consecutive uh, symbols any consecutive portions in your string is called the substring. Then reverse of a string, it, it is represented with the W R, W to the power R. So that means uh, writing the symbols in the string in the reverse order. Okay, if suppose the string is uh, uh, 1100, then the reverse is 0011, just uh, reversing the order of the uh, symbols. Then the last one is power of an alphabet. It is represented with the sigma to the power k. So it is nothing but the string. Uh, it is the set of all strings with the length k. Set of all strings with the length k. Suppose our alphabet is 0, 1, binary alphabet, 0 and 1. Sigma to the power 3 means it is the set of all strings with length 3. So here we have 0, 0, 0, that is length, see, 3 characters are there, length is 3. Then 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. All are strings made up of 0 and 1 and their length is 3. Okay, so that represents sigma to the power 3. Then sigma to the power 2 means it is the length of all, it is the set of all strings with the length 2. Okay, so you can see 0, 0, the length is 2, 0, 1, length is 2, 1, 0, length 2, 1, 1, length 2. Okay, so it is the set of, all the strings are made of 0, 1 and the length is 2. So that is sigma to the power 2. And sigma 1 is uh, the set of all strings with the length 1. And it should be made of 0 and 1. So the only possible two strings are 0 and 1. The length is 1. For 0, length 1, because only one character. For 1, length 1. OK. Then sigma 0 is nothing but the string with the set of string with the length 0. So we have only one special string with the length 0, that is epsilon. So this is sigma 0, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, like that. So these are all called the power of an alphabet. So if we represent uh, k equal to 3, we get uh, this one. When k equal to 3, it is this one. When k equal to 2, it is this. k equal to 1 means this. k equal to 0 means this. So k can be any number. k can be uh, 4, 5, 6 or any number. 
then another terminology is sigma star sigma star it is actually the set of all strings including epsilon that means i can say that sigma star is the union of sigma to the power 0 sigma to the power 1 sigma to the power 2 sigma to the power 3 uh, etc up to infinity that means it contains the set of all strings sigma to the power 0 means it is nothing but epsilon this is epsilon union this is the union operation union sigma to the power 1 means set of all strings with length 1 this one then sigma to the power 2 means set of all strings with length 2 this one then sigma to the power 3 means set of all strings with length 3 so in it goes like that so it takes all strings with all length 0 1 2 3 up to infinity so in short we can say that it is the set of all strings including epsilon okay that is sigma star then uh, uh, next one is sigma plus sigma plus means uh, excluding sigma uh, epsilon okay yeah, sigma plus means it is only <laughs> it is only sigma 1 union sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma 4 like that so it is not containing a uh, sigma 0 okay that means epsilon is not included all the other strings are included here uh, strings with length 1 strings with length 2 length 3 everything is included except epsilon okay that is sigma plus so sigma plus and the sigma star these are the two uh, uh, special cases so sigma star we need to use in many places Okay, so far you have any doubt? If you have any doubt, you please ask. Okay. So far it is okay. Okay, you have to respond. Otherwise, I won't. I will not get any feedback. I will not get. I will not understand whether you you are able to follow my class or not. Okay, if you are not interacting, uh, there is no point in taking the class. right this is our remedial class if you have any doubt you may think that it is a silly doubt it doesn't matter we should know a very small point okay even if it is a simple thing you can ask okay so once again we can rewind uh, this so formal language is nothing but the set of strings language is basically a set which contains different strings and the alphabet is the symbols that we use in the uh, language okay for english we use a b c d binary we use 0 1 for decimal numbers we use 0 to 9 like that then string is another terminology it represented with the w it is the collection of characters we when we combine different characters or different alphabets together we will get a string then the another term is the length of the string or if uh, string is the collection of characters when we count those characters that number is the length then empty string is the null string which has no character or no alphabet we use in that its length is zero okay and if we include epsilon in any string it will not make any change to the uh, string then concatenation means combining one string to the other w1 dot w2 means first we have to write w1 then w2 if it is w2 dot w1 if it is this one uh, it first we have to write w2 then write w1 that is concatenation then substring means any consecutive combinations of our string okay so here 00 is a substring 101 can be taken as a substring 0101 is a substring 1010 is a substring 11 is a substring okay so if we take any consecutive set of characters from our string that is the substring 
then uh, reverse of a string means we are just reversing the order of our characters so 1100 means zero its reverse is 0011 that, uh, the, then the last one is the power of an alphabet. It is represented as sigma to the power k. Then uh, it is uh, representing the set of all strings with length k. <coughs> then sigma star means it is the set of all strings. Somebody is trying to join. Uh, sigma star is the set of all strings including epsilon. Sigma 0, sigma 1, sigma 2, everything. All strings uh, that can be made of using sigma. Okay, Then sigma plus is the set of all strings except epsilon. So in sigma plus epsilon will not be included. Hope this much is okay. Now we can move to finite automata. Finite automata means machines. So in our context, it is machines means computers. So finite automaton is a machine. Automaton is the, uh, this is the singular word of automata. Automata is plural. It means machines. Okay. So finite automaton is a machine that solves membership problem. So what is membership means? So the, suppose this box represents our finite automata and it take an input string and the finite automata will tell you whether this input is a member of the language or not okay so if it if if a language l is given and uh, the uh, finite automata will tell whether the input belongs to this language or not this question will be answered by finite automata and this is actually called the membership problem if whether the input is a member of the set or not, a member of the language or not. Okay, so it can be yes or no, or we can call it as accept or reject. Okay, so suppose the input is 1000. Okay, it's a binary string. If, we, if it is the member of the language, the machine will automata will accept it. Okay, or the output will be yes. So 100 is a member of the language. And if it is not a member, it will the machine should, will reject it. Okay, so it is basically solving a membership problem. And one more thing, the finite automata, one automata is defi defined for one language. Okay, so one machine is defined for one language and for another language, we have to define another machine. Okay, and if we have a third language for that, we have to define a third machine, different machine. Uh, one machine cannot work on all languages. Then finite automata, in short, we represent it as FA, finite automata, FA. Finite automata is represented using a directed graph. So in mathematics, we have seen the directed graph, something like this. We have some vertices, okay, some vertices, and they are connected with a directed line, okay. So these are called uh, um, a directed graph, okay. So these are the vertex 1, vertex 2, like that we represent. So the same kind of graphical representation can be used to represent a finite automata. And it is called the transition diagram. In our terms, in formal languages or automata theory, we use the term transition diagram instead of directed graph. Both are same only, but here we use the term transition diagram. So it is actually showing the transition between the states. So these are called the states of the machine. Okay, suppose this is a, this is an example of this transition diagram. Okay, why we say that it is a transition diagram means if you have a machine, it, it can have or it can be at a different states. 
so suppose q0 is one state so likewise i i said in the class like if you consider a fan so in our class we have fans so it can have uh, uh, two different states it can be in off state or or it can be in on state these are the two states okay so this is uh, two states uh, when we switch it on it will move to on state and if uh, switch off it will move to move back to off state so the, these are this is the uh, state um, this diagram shows the changes in the or the transitions from one state to the other so since it represents the transition we call it as the transition diagram okay so each circle represents the state and uh, um, the arrows represents the transition so on the arrow we have to represent uh, on which input the machine changes its trans changes its state okay so this one we have to represent like this <coughs> so in this example we have a um, i have drawn a transition diagram for a particular machine it accepts uh, some kind of language okay which language that we are not we don't bother now so this is a general it's a, a normal structure of a transition diagram and the states are labeled instead of off on kind of representation we use the states we name the states like q0 q1 q2 like that okay this is a normal way of representing uh, states so in some textbooks instead of q0 and uh, q1 q0 q1 they represent the capital letters a b c d like that okay that representation is also there capital letters uh, english alphabets can be used instead of q0 q1 q2 but we are following this method q0 q1 q2 method okay so when we uh, look into this diagram when we look into this diagram there are different types of uh, circles we can see okay so when we take this q0 q0 there is an arrow coming from nowhere because uh, uh, when we consider all other uh, transitions here if if we take this transition there is it is starting from q0 ending in q1 and in the next one uh, this transition represents uh, it starts from q1 and end in q2 like that but when we look into this one it is uh, on the left hand side nothing is there so we call we use this arrow to represent a special kind of state that is called the initial state okay so initial state means if you consider the fan this is the off state is the initial state that is the idle state okay so whenever we start the machine the machine will be in the initial condition so that is represented as q0 with an arrow okay normally we label it with it with a start or simply write q0 and put an arrow like this so this represents and normally we use the name q0 for initial states okay then we we can consider the next state is uh, a simple state which contains different arrows coming into it coming uh, going out of it like that and that is the that is called the intermediate uh, states okay we can use any number q2 q3 q4 any number we can use there okay so this is an intermediate state then the third kind of state is we can see double circle is there okay in all the other states there is only one state one circle okay but here we have seen two circles two concentric circles we can see so these are special kind of uh, states which are which are called as final states okay final states are normally represented with a double circle so these are the three types of states in any transition di diagram one is initial state then uh, there can be any number of there will be only one initial state and there can be any number of intermediate states and there can be any number of final states okay so initial state intermediate state and final state so these are the 
three types of states in finite automata. Okay, so we just saw uh, how to represent a finite automata in, in graphical way. It is nothing but a directed graph and the three true different types of states in the transition. Model. And these arrows represent, uh, the, the, there is an arrow from Q0 to Q1, there is an arrow. Okay, what, and uh, on the arrow we have a symbol zero. So what it means that when the machine is in Q0 and uh, the input coming to the machine is zero, in that case, the machine will take a transition from Q0 to Q1. That is the meaning of this sim, this arrow. Okay, then in Q1, we can have a, a, a transition like this. Uh, we call it as a self-loop, a transition starting and ending in the same state. And uh, it is on zero. So that means if the machine is in this state, in Q1 state, and the current input is zero, then it, the machine will remain in the same state itself. It will not take any state changes or state transition. It will be in the same state. So self-loop means it will remain in the same state. Then this transition, we have one more transition here. It means that when the machine is in Q1 and the current input value is 1, okay, at that time, the machine will transit from Q1 to Q2. Okay, it will take a transition from Q1 to Q2. So that is the meaning of this arrow. So whenever there is an arrow from one state to the other, it means that the machine is taking a transition from that uh, original uh, source state to the destination state on this symbol. Okay. So that are the basic idea of the finite automate. <laughs> then how we know the finite automata accept or reject a string? Okay, so suppose uh, we have a finite automata like this. It has uh, three states, Q0, Q1, Q2. And where uh, Q0 is the initial state, okay, this is the initial state and the Q1 is the final state, okay. So here uh, it ha we have two circles. That means Q1 is the final state and Q2 is a another in intermediate state. Okay. Uh, so Q2 is another intermediate state or uh, the states other than initial state and the final state. Okay. And here the symbols that we have used are A and B. This is the alphabet we are using. Okay. So what... How we know the machine accept or reject a particular string? If suppose A, A, B is the input to the machine. Okay. So this uh, A, A, B should be accepted by the machine. It uh, This machine accept the string. Okay. And uh, if the string is B, A, B, the machine will reject it. Okay, I am saying that AAB will be accepted and BAB will be rejected. And how we know the AAB is accepted or how, uh, B, uh, how we know BAB is rejected? Okay, so let us look into it. So we, uh, uh, this is the input. Okay, see in this, this is our input uh, tape where we have written the string AAB. So this, this input I am considering first, AAB is considering, okay. So uh, AAB is written in the memory tape, okay. This is the uh, program memory in, in, inside the automata. Okay, AAB is there. So initially, the machine will be in initial state, Q0. When we start processing an input, uh, the machine will always be in the initial state. So Q0 is our initial state. It will be there. Then we are going to read the first character. First character A. So when we read the first character A, it takes this transition. It takes this transition. That means when machine is in Q0 and the input is A, we are asked to process or take this transition. Okay, that is the meaning of the self-loop. 
the machine is in q0 and the input is a it will be it will remain in the same state that is the this transition then we have to read so first letter first character we have read next we have to take the next character a next a we have to take so again what happened again we are in q0 only still we are we are in q0 and again we got an a it will take uh, this transition again the same self loop it will take okay then so first two characters we have seen these two characters we have seen next we have to take uh, the third character b so when third character b so b were the machine was in q0 and the current input is b current input is b q0 when the machine is in q0 and the input is b it will take this transition the red red uh, lined transition it will take and it will transit to the machine will change its state to q1 okay so we have re we have read the three characters after reading three characters now the machine is in q1 now the machine is in q1 okay so again uh, the machine tries to read input from the uh, input uh, tape but uh, the string is over okay string is completed then thing more to read so what happens now we check whether the machine is now in a final state or not okay now the machine is in q1 after reading the entire string after reading all the characters in the string and the machine is now in final state so at this condition this machine accept it it means that the machine accept the this input a a b it accept a a b that is the meaning so how we know a machine accept a string or not after reading the entire string if the machine is in final state that string is accepted that is the meaning okay hope you understand uh, do we need to go through go? do it once again do we need to check it once again okay so we can check it once again that is uh, uh, we have the strings uh, string a a b in our input tape okay the we are about to read the input okay the machine is about to read the input so initially the machine is in uh, q0 state initial state and the transition says that if it is the machine is in q0 and the input is a it will take this transition and it will remain in q0 itself and if the input is b it will take a transition from q0 to q1 and if the machine is in q1 and the input is a or b it will take a transition to q2 a comma b means uh, if a or b okay if a comes or b comes it will take this transition to q2 and if the machine is in q2 and uh, the inputs are a and b means it will remain in the same state q2 itself so that is the meaning of these transitions so we are going to process the input first we read a uh, machine is in q0 we read a means it will take the self loop then again we read the next a again it will be in the same self loop then we read b so b will make a transition from q0 to q1 so the now the machine is in q1 so the red colored state is the current state the machine is in q1 then we are trying to read the next character from the input but there is no more characters in the uh, string so uh, that means we have completed the string after consuming the entire characters in the string the machine is uh, still in the final state so that means the string is accepted so after reading entire characters if the machine is in final state that string is accepted okay now we can see a rejectance uh, rejection case okay suppose the string is b a b okay so uh, we are about to read the characters 
the machine is in initial state q0 the red colored one then we are going to read b okay so we read b when we read b it will take a transition from q0 to q1 because the transition says that if the input is b it has to change from q0 to q1 so now machine is in q1 then we are going to read the next character a so if it is a or b whatever character it will take transition from q1 to q2 so the now the machine is in q2 then we read the next character b next character b we are reading and we are in q2 state and the b means it will take the self loop okay so after reading b a b after reading three characters the machine is in q2 then again we are trying to read the next character but there is no more characters in the string so that means the, we reach the end of the string so when we reach the end of the string when which state the machine is the machine is in q2 state and q2 state is not a final state that means this particular input is rejected that means b a b this b a b is b a b this string is rejected because after reading the entire string after reading the last character in the string the machine is not in the final state not in final state so if the machine is not in final state after reading the entire character characters that means the machine rejects the string input string so hope you understand the how the machine accept or reject a particular input so any doubt in this you understood the transitions and how we check the uh, acceptance or rejectance of the machine of the strings hope you understood this uh, we can move on to uh, next uh, some examples we can see okay if you have any doubt feel free to ask Okay, then different types of finite automata. There are two types of finite automata: DFA and NFA. DFA is deterministic finite automata. NFA is non-deterministic finite automata. We will see what is DFA and the NFA. So DFA, the definition says like this. Okay, any de deterministic finite automata represented uh, like a five tuple. It is represented as a five tuple. So the first term is Q. We call it as five tuple. So it's a tuple which has five elements. First element is uh, Q. Second is sigma, delta, Q zero, and F. And the first one Q is the set of states in the machine. Set of states. Okay. Then second one is the alphabet that we use in the machine then third one delta it means the transition function that means uh, if machine is in a particular state and a particular input comes what should be the transition or what should be the next state that is specified by delta then four is uh, the initial state which symbol we use to represent the initial state then the last one is f that is the set of final states it is set of final state that means there can be multiple final states we put it in a set notation so that is the uh, set uh, f capital f 
where this q0 and f are in in q only okay what are states we specified in q that only can come here and here in 4 and 5 okay q sigma delta q0 and f delta we'll see later you need not bother okay so if for example if we take the same machine that we have seen earlier the say take the same machine a b uh, there is from q0 there is transition for a and transition for b then from q1 there is a transition for a and b from q2 there is a transition for a and b okay so the machine is represented as m is equal to q sigma delta q0 f and what is q it is the set of states so here we have three states q0 q1 q2 so put them in a set notation that is all q q is q0 q1 q2 the three states the states we have represented then sigma sigma is uh, the symbols um, or alphabet that we use in the language or in the machine so here the alphabet is a and b so normally this alphabet the alphabet should be given in your question okay that means when, if you are asked to draw a machine the sigma should be given then uh, delta is the transition and then we'll see it later q0 is the initial state q0 state is the initial state then f is the set of final states is here q1 is the final state q1 is the final state so we represent it in uh, set notation set to q1 that is all these are the five components in the machine so this is how we define a machine and the transition we have to represent in different way okay so the uh, that we can represent the delta we can represent with the transition table okay this can be represented in a table format that we are going to see how to represent the transition table or I, we can say uh, this uh, a, a finite automata can be represented with the uh, it has the graphical representation graphical representation is there then tabular representation is there tabular okay graphical representation we use the transition diagram uh, just like uh, this one just like this one the transition diagram we can use or the graph directed graph for tabular representation we use the transition table okay it's a table kind of representation okay we are going to see the transition table how to represent it in a table the same machine we can represent in table so for that we have to draw a table like this uh, on the rows we represent uh, the uh, on the rows we represent the states okay q0 q1 and q2 are the uh, states okay so in the machine you can see q0 q1 q0 q1 and q2 so those uh, states you have to represent in the uh, rows okay q0 q1 q2 and an arrow is there for uh, the initial state if it is an initial state put an arrow there and for star for final states we put the star q1 is the final state so put a star at, at the side of q1 then input uh, the alphabet is represented in the columns so a is the alphabet so it is represented so q0 um, q1 q2 the states and uh, on the columns we represent the symbols uh, or the alphabet symbols a and b are the symbols now uh, we have to write so for a better understanding i put it as a matrix okay so which contains six columns six uh, cells okay so we have to uh, fill the every cell okay here this 
this first cell means that if the machine is in state q0 and if the input is a what transition or which transition it will take and which will be the next stage after the transition okay so machine is in q0 and the input is a what will be the transition we can check in the uh, machine so if the machine is in q0 and if the input is a it will be a self loop that means it the machine will be in the same state so the next state will be q0 itself so we have to fill q0 over here okay fill q0 over here that means uh, at q0 if a comes it will remain in q0 itself then the next column says if the machine in q0 and the input is b what is the next state if the machine is in q0 check the state diagram if the machine is in q0 and the input is b it will take this transition and transit to q1 so next state after this transition is q1 so that we have to fill here q1 okay so when machine is in q0 and the input symbol is b the next state after transition it will be in q1 so it takes this transition and reaches q1 so the next state is q1 then here we have to fill if the machine is in q1 and the input is a what will be the next state so if the check the transition diagram if the machine is in q1 and the input is a it will take this transition that is transition from q1 to q2 so the next state will be q2 next state will be q2 so the q2 is written there then similarly if the machine is in q1 and the input symbol is b okay if the machine is in q1 if the input symbol is b it will take a transition to q2 okay from q1 on b it will take a transition to q2 so the next state is q2 that we have to fill here in this column then the third one is the last one the, if the machine is in q2 and if the input is a what will be the next state so we can see the transition diagram q2 the machine q2 uh, machine in q2 and if the input is a it will take the self loop only so that means it will remain in q2 itself so if for state q2 if the input is a it will remain in same q2 itself so that q2 we have to write here then the last column for q2 if b comes what will be the next state for q2 if b comes it will remain in the same state there is a self loop only so it will remain in same state that is it. here we have to fill q2 so that is how we write the transition table of a machine and the initial state is represented with arrow and the final state is represented with the star so whatever information this diagram gives us the same information we can get from this table as well so both uh, can be used interchangeably either transition diagram or the state table we can use okay transition table we can use then how we can construct a finite automata or a deterministic finite automata so uh, let us consider one example construct a dfa to accept all strings starting with the a all strings starting with the a and the alphabet is a comma b sigma is equal to a comma b so the symbols we are going to use is a and b so what we have to uh, create all strings starting with a so let us consider the language so a is a string that satisfies this condition a is starting with the a so it is in the language a a that string is also starting with a then a b that is also starting with the a a a a is also starting with the a so all these strings are belonging to that specified language all strings are starting with the a so the thing is the uh, structure of the string is like this the first character should be a the remaining can be any combination of a and b okay 
any combination of A and B. First character, very first character should be A. Remaining can be anything. That is the <coughs> structure of the string. <coughs> so to draw the DFA, first we consider the favorable condition. Okay, so favorable condition here is uh, what kind of strings will be accepted? The strings that are starting with the A. So we assume that the string is starting with the A. So the different states that we can consider is first we have to take the initial state. Okay, we take initial state Q0. Then uh, think of different possible states. One possibility is the string start with the A. Okay, one possibility the string can start with the A. If it starts with the A, we can accept it. So, the start with the A, if the string starts with A, we make it as a final state. Okay, then another possibility is we have to consider the negative conditions also. That means the string is starting with the B or other than A. Okay. It is not starting with the A. That condition also we have to consider. That is another state. Okay. So one state is the string is starting with the A. And the other one is the string is not starting with the A. Two, two possibilities are there. So those two possibilities we have to consider when we draw the DFA. So the initial state and the other final state is start with the A. So in from initial state if we find the A. So suppose you take the string... Um, a, A, B. So take the string A, A, B. Okay. So when we find the first A, first A, so the machine is always starting from Q0. When we first see the first A, the very first character is A means I can accept the string. So I can move to the final state. It is starting with A. So I will draw a transition like A. Like this. So from Q0, from initial state, if I see A as the first character, I will move to the start with the A state. That is the final state. Then after that, after this A, I can have any A or B. So once I reach this final state, after that, if, uh, if A or B, whatever comes, it does not matter, I can accept, still I can accept the string. So what I do is, I will put a self loop over there. So first character is A, this is our favorable condition, first character is A. And uh, after that, I can have A or B, any number of A and B, any combinations I can have, no, mat no problem. The still I can accept the string. So if I take uh, A, B, B, Still, uh, if, if I read the first A, it will move from Q0 to uh, this state. And uh, for the next two Bs, it will take the self loop and remain in the same final state and the string will be accepted. Okay. And consider this A, 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 A. So when we see the first A, it will transit from Q0 to this state, the final state. And for the remaining all threes, it will take the same self loop. It will remain in the same loop uh, and it will remain in the final state. So thus, finally, the string will be accepted. So after reading the entire characters in a string, if the machine is in final state, the, uh, the string will be accepted. Okay, so this is the positive conditions. Now we have to consider the negative conditions also. Negative cases also. That is the speciality of DFA. In DFA, we have to consider both favorable and unfavorable conditions, positive and negative conditions. So the next one we are seeing is, uh, the next state is, the other possibility is the string can start with uh, any other character other than A. Okay, or we can say the string is not starting with A. That means uh, you take the string B, A, B, A, B. Okay. So initially we are in Q0. Initially we are in Q0. And we find the first character B. What should be done from Q0? We cannot move to the final state because it is not starting with A. It is actually starting with the B. So we have to draw a transition from Q0 to 
this state not starting with the a state that, may, that means our string is not starting with the a so we'll draw a transition like this from q0 if the first character is b so our string is uh, bab if this the first character is b it is taking a transition like this so once it is starting with the b means it is not in our language because our, we are accepting all strings start with the a it should start with a otherwise it should be rejected so what means if it is not starting with the a it should not be accepted okay so we put a self loop over here so after b whatever things come it does not matter we cannot accept so we put it in the same state itself because the string is not starting with the a okay then you check uh, you take every state and uh, check whether we have drawn transition for every symbol so in alphabet we have two symbols a and b and check whether uh, from every state we have transitions for both a and b so from q0 we have transition for a and transition for b okay then for this state there is transition for a and b and from this state there are transitions for a and b so from every state we have transitions for every symbol okay then the next step is so instead of writing starting with the a or not starting with the a what we are going to do is we are going to rename these states so instead of these uh, writings we put it like a q1 q2 okay so our machine is over so this is the machine that accept all strings starting with the a okay then we can see one more example that is uh, uh, constructed dfa for a uh, for a language which contains all strings end with a all strings end with a that means uh, at the beginning we can have any set of a and b any care any string and at the end it should be a okay here we can have any combination of a and b but the last character should be a that is the meaning oh sorry it is a mistake it is b what i have written the reverse thing i have written sorry this one this is wrong actually not this language uh, every all strings should end with a so the language can be a b a b b a or a a um then b a a triple a all our strings ending with a okay all our strings ending with a so the strings should be like this initially you can have any combination of a and b but the last character should be a so we take initial state then another state is uh, ending with a then the last uh, another one more state possible is uh, not ending with a okay that uh, we uh, taken in different way so we consider a character like this um, a string like this b a a okay take this string so the state is initial state and uh, end with the a state two states we have taken so if it is ending with the a we can accept so we put the double circle that is the final state end with the a is the final state so from q0 uh if we find b um, uh, we need we cannot uh, transit it to uh, end with a state because we are seeing b only so we have not seen any a so what happens it will uh, the q0 it will remain in q0 itself okay if it is b it will take it will remain in the same state itself and if it find an a we assume that it may be the final a it may be the last character we don't know after this a any more character comes or not we don't know so if we find a we think that it is the final state if it is the final character 
the it will take a transition from q0 to uh, this state uh, end with a state okay and after that uh, we again read an a and we find uh, one more a okay after this a we find one more a still it is a ending with a so still we can accept it so that means the machine can remain in the same final state if, even if you read an a here okay so that means we will put a uh, self loop over here and what happens if we have a b after this suppose our string is b a a b so it is not ending with a so it should be it should be rejected or it should be uh, this machine should not be in the final state so that means at this position at this state if you find a b we will go back to the initial state uh, I, i will say this is not the unique solution you can draw it uh, with a, another uh, method like uh, uh, end with b you can write another state end with b okay you can include another state like this and uh, you can have a, a transitions to here instead of drawing this transition you can take the transition to here and do in that way also okay uh, it does not matter you can follow any method but finally it should accept all the valid strings and it should reject all the invalid strings that also possible so this is uh, uh, i have drawn here with the minimum states that's all you can draw in you can do in different way so this is the dfa that accept uh, all strings end with a hello ma'am once explain the dfa once again dfa this example or previous example this example only ma'am i had net problem so uh, leave i have leave in the meeting okay so this is uh, Uh, we are going to construct a machine or a dfa that uh, accept all strings end with a okay so these are the uh, strings that are ending with a uh, assume the alphabet is uh, a comma b assume the alphabet is a comma b okay so the possible strings are a is the string ending with a b a is also ending with a b b a is ending with a a a is ending with a b a a is ending with a so all these are the the strings that are ending with a so it makes the language okay l is equal to this set so we can consider initial state so we are going to consider the positive conditions first draw the initial state okay and whenever uh, one more state is there that is end with a the string can end with a so if it is ending with a we have to accept it so end with a state is final state okay so assume we have a string called b a a okay so we start in initial state in in initial state and when we read b when we read b it cannot move to end with a because we have read only b so what we do is we will remain in the in same state we remain in q0 itself okay because once we find a then only we can accept it so then when we we read the next character a so when we read the next character the machine assumes that it may be the final character it may be the last character in the string then we can accept it okay then we can accept it so we the machine is moving to the final state okay then after that we have one more a so even though we have one more a it is still in the it is still having a last a okay the last character is a so what we do is we will do a fine self loop over here that means after one a if we find any more a's if we find any number of a still it is ending with a so we can accept it so we'll remain in the uh, final state itself 
Okay, and what happens if we have a B at the end? Okay, so uh, for all these A's, we were in the final state. But when we find a B, we know that it is not ending with B. It is not ending with A. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so we cannot remain in this state anymore. We cannot remain here anymore because it is not ending with A. So what we do is we'll move back to the initial state or or instead of this, we can do in a different way. We can add another state end with the B. OK, that is not a final state because our language requires end with the A condition only. So end with the A. So from this state, if you find a B, you can go to the state also. OK, instead of this one, instead of this transition, you can do like this. You can add an additional state and draw the transitions here. And from this state, if you find any B, you can go back to this one. OK, and if you find any more B, you can remain here itself because it is still ending with B. We cannot accept it. It will remain in the same non-final state. OK, so this diagram is also possible. This transition diagram or this machine is also accepting this language. Or you can draw instead of instead of adding a third state, you can use the initial state itself. That is also possible. OK, so we can use this transition instead of these additional transitions and state. So the two things are a two way in two different ways we can uh, draw the machine. Both the machines will accept the same language. OK. Now the next thing is uh, instead of writing the state names like end with the A and all, we will replace it with the Q1. OK, instead of writing that sentences, we write uh, the state name as Q1. That is all. So we, we can just check whether the machine accept uh, or uh, reject a particular string. So uh, if my string is BBA, what happens? If the string is BBA, the machine starts in Q0. And uh, when it reads B, uh, it will take this transition and remains in Q1, it, Q0 itself. So first character we read, but then we read the next character B, next B. Still it will be in the same state. It will take this uh, self loop and remain in Q0 itself. Then read A. When we read A, uh, this transition has to be taken. So we are in Q0. When we see A, it will take a transition to Q1. OK, and our string is over after reading the entire characters in the string. We have reached uh, the state Q1 and Q1 is a final state. So this string B -A -B -B -A is accepted. OK, so this is accepted. Suppose our string is ABB. Our string is ABB. So first we uh, start with the uh, uh, Q0. Initially we are at uh, Q0. And uh, we read the first character A, first character A. So it will take this transition from Q0 to Q1. So the, now the machine is in Q1. And we read the next character B. So when we read the next character B, it will take this transition and move back to Q1, Q0. So now the machine is in Q0. Then again, we read B means it will take the self loop and it will remain in Q0 itself. OK, our string is over. A, B, B is over. So after reading the full uh, string, the machine is in Q0 and Q0 is not a final state. So the machine uh, rejects. That means the machine rejects the given string. That means ABB is rejected. After reading ABB, we are not in final state. OK. So then uh, we can see some examples these I have given in our tutorial sessions. So all strings end with a zero. We have to have a transition. Uh, we have to draw a machine. We have to draw a machine <coughs> that accepts all strings ending with a zero zero. So the machine looks like this. 
um uh, this is a ending with you can replace it like a ending with a q0 and uh, this can be ending with a 0 0 like that you can uh, rewrite okay then you can check okay you uh, just go through all these examples okay if you see more examples it will be uh, you will get more idea about all these okay Next, uh, we can see uh, NFA2, then we can stop the class. Okay, so we have seen DFA. Now we are going to see uh, NFA, non-deterministic finite automata. The definition is of NFA and DFA both are same. The only change is in the uh, uh, delta function only, on delta only. All the other definitions are same. Q is the set of state. Uh, sigma is the uh, input symbols or the alphabet. This is the transition function. This is initial state and this is the uh, set of final states okay now all are same then uh, this is an example of an nfa example of uh, nfa which contains only two states q0 and uh, q1 q0 is the initial state and q1 is the final state and uh, uh, the machine can be represented in the same way q sigma delta q0 and f so Q is the set of states, Q0, Q1, only two states we have. Then sigma is A and B. Then delta is the transition function. Q0 is the initial state and uh, F is the uh, set of final states. Here Q1 is the only final state. Okay. So here you can see that in DFA, we have seen DFA where uh, we should have transition for all symbols. If we have A and B in our alphabet, from every state there should be transitions for A and B, both A and B. But in this example, you can see that there is no transition for A from Q0. From Q1, we have both uh, transition for both A and B. Okay, no, uh, no problem. But for Q0, uh, there is no transition for A. So in the definition of NFA, what they say is there can be for for every state, for every state, uh, for one input, for one input, there can be zero or more transitions, zero or more transitions. That means. Some transition, some sometimes the transitions may not be defined for some input, or there can be multiple transitions for same input. We can see just to see the example. Okay, so the transition table for this is going to represent uh, like this. Uh, Q0, Q1, Q0 is the initial state, so the arrow, then Q1 is the final state, so the star. Then the input symbols are A and B. So these are the symbols in the alphabet. And the transition is going to represent for Q0, when the input is A, what is the transition? So we know that there is no transitions defined for A here. So we cannot specify what will be the next state. So what we do is we will put a null set here because the transitions are not defined. Then here we have to specify Q0 B. Uh, if the machine is in Q0 and the input is B, if the machine is in Q0 and the input is B, we have to take uh, this transition to Q1. So the next state is Q1 that we have to specify it in the set notation, set to Q1. 
then for q1 for both a and b it will remain in q1 itself so these two columns are filled with the set to q1 set to q1 like that this is how we represent the uh, transition table and how we construct an nfa um, the same question we can take uh, all strings starting with the a okay so the difference with the nfa and dfa are when we draw a dfa we had to consider both the favorable case and unfavorable case that is positive and the negative cases but when when you draw nfa we need to consider only the favorable conditions we need not bother about the negative cases okay so our string should start with the a so we starting with the q0 then start with a condition is there uh, that state is there that is the final state so we assume that it is starting with a <coughs> and after a we can have any number of characters so that any number of characters is represented as a b okay so only this much we need not bother what happens if the string start with b or what happens uh, if uh, after b some a comes what to do nothing we need to think only the favorable condition that favorable condition is the string is starting with a after a there can be anything so this is uh, starting with a after this a we can have any number of a and b so it will be in the same self loop and uh, the string will be uh, accepted and we rename the string the state with another name okay q1 or q2 it should be q1 i think so likewise so i think that is almost 820 you may be fed up with the, all the topics so once you i, I will share the ppts that we have uh, taken today you just go through all the ppts all the uh, slides okay take a note of it or you take a um, you write it in your notebook okay and try to solve some more questions i have given all the questions uh, some more questions in the ppt you try to solve all those okay and if you have any doubt you can either message me privately or you can put it in the group so that everyone can know the question and answers okay that uh, there is no no problem you can put any query any doubts and regarding adf ma'am okay ma'am we cannot try any another shape for uh, b n with b in uh, nfa ma'am i didn't understand word ma'am in nfa you told me ma'am we can uh, only uh, think about only possible cases there is no negative cases we cannot consider no ma'am Uh, we are not considering okay so uh, what happens if uh, the negative cases comes that's what you are asking what is the question if the string is b a a what will happen yes ma'am okay if the string is b a a uh, we are we are in initial state q0 okay and we mm. are reading b okay if we read b in q0 there is no transition for b transition is undefined so if such case if any undefined transitions came undefined transitions came automatically the string will be rejected okay ma'am okay. so when we process the nfa whenever we meet with this condition that is we are in a particular state okay and we have an input symbol and but there is no transition for that input symbol from that state is defined suppose we are in qk and our current uh, there are transitions for b from qk there is a transition for b but our current input is a so that means from q k there is no transitions defined for a but we are reading our input is a at the same time so in that case the transition is not defined here so that string entire string will be rejected that is the case okay any other doubt if you have no doubts means you can leave 
you have any doubt, you can ask. Brahma Naidu, you are there or not? You are there. Listen to the yes. class. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you have any doubts? You understood all points? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, take it to the, to the notebook and show me. Tomorrow the... morning only I will show you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all.